So Paul, during the COVID time, all the conversations are being done remotely or via Zoom, but also leaders has to show kind of an empathy when dealing with tough conversation. So what tips you have for leaders to show that when they're having that conversation? Well, I, I think one of the focuses has to be because things are changing so quickly and people are leaving companies very quickly and it's hard to find their replacements. What I write about in my various books and, and articles, Meher, is always this idea of selfless leadership, mm -hmm. of putting people's needs ahead of your own, becoming more of a coach. Yeah. And that idea of coaching leadership replaces the old management paradigm of, I'll tell you what you need to do. Yeah. And it's more of helping people in terms of their own professional and career development. And I think this idea is very simple. I, I tell people use a simple litmus test. Are you someone's favorite boss? Mm -hmm. And they look at me like, hmm? And I'm like, well, think about the best boss you've ever had. And when I do these group sessions, I'll say, tell me about the best boss you've ever had. And they'll say, well, someone who had my back, someone who trusted me to do things that mm -hmm. I didn't even think I was capable of doing. And I kind of talk to them about this idea of it's not really the boss's beingness, it's the boss's doingness. It's who the person was that motivates you, not necessarily what they did. So how do you pay that forward? How do you have to be a, a great leader and a, and a great executive? And the answer is selfless leadership and, and trying to find the paradigm where you know what your favorite boss was to you. Yes. Now figure out how to pay it forward and do it to someone else. The, the other thing I'll say is you'll see uh, companies are doing a lot more what they call stay interviews. The idea of a stay interview is, is the opposite of a counter offer. The counter offer is when the person comes in and gives you notice and then you scramble to try and keep them. Please don't leave. How much money do you want? Do you want a promotion? Now, don't do that at the end. You need to do that before your, your top players leave. So sitting with them in terms of this stay interview is just very transparent. And you tell them, here, I value you. Mm -hmm. You're a critical part of the team. I need to make sure you're, you're hitting it on all cylinders, so to speak, that you feel like um, your career and professional development needs are met and that you know, you're know you making the, the greatest contribution, you're doing your best work every day. How can I help with that? And get in there before they leave. And yeah. so that's kind of the logic. Theoretically, they should have been doing it all along my hair, yeah. but now is the time for them to do it. And the third thing, the third element I'd say is people are looking for real-time feedback. Yes. Not the once a year performance review that goes in the personnel drawer. Mm -hmm. They really want that feedback. So what I'm telling my, my the managers where I work and when I tell people and advise them in my writing, is make sure you're having quarterly feedback meetings. And the meetings, you put the burden on the employee to have that meeting and schedule it with you as the leader yeah. and let them be the ones who are in control of their careers and then you can coach them. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the best way to keep your employees engaged and creating an environment where they can motivate themselves. And I also believe that once leaders are being promoted, they should have a training module to all of these things, you know, empathy, having those coach and not just being promoted and left by their own, correct? Yeah, they don't teach that in MBA schools. And, and it's, it's difficult. Where, where I have written my books historically was having the tough conversations or knowing how to motivate them and knowing how to interview them or knowing how to do performance discipline if there's a problem. That's the how of it all. And they don't teach that in school, not in college, not in graduate school. And so people have to come out and figure it out, out on their own. And yeah. they step on landmines more times than not. Yeah. And I just think it would be a lot easier if we did have those kind of practical courses out there. But thank goodness there are books uh, yeah. for those kinds of things to fill in the gap. Yeah.